If you are just joining us, we are staying with this breaking news in New York City. The verdict is in and former President Trump's trial guilty on all 34 counts in the falsified business records case against him. Uh, we just heard from the president saying this is far from over. He maintains his innocence and says he will fight, meaning the next step, step is the appeals courts. And he even talked about this is not going to change his election. Like he, again, maintains his innocence, even though 34 counts guilty, all counts. So when they were reading it out, Liz, we were in here and it was like one through five, one through 12, 13, 14, 15, and all counts guilty. And uh, right now we have our Fox 8 legal analyst, Joe Responti, here to just give us more perspective on today's verdict. Thank you so much for joining us, Joe. Hi. <laughs> um, your thoughts on this, I guess the, the verdict is in, and, and your, first of all, your reaction to the verdicts? Well, you know, as soon as they said we're ready to go, you knew it wasn't a hung verdict, a hung jury at all. Uh, what uh, has transpired, it's, you know, uh, as I've always said for many things, and once again, let me preface this by saying you're asking a Louisiana lawyer to comment on a New York case. They do things a little bit different as far as closing arguments, but the justice system is the justice system, and if we believe in it, the jury has spoken, and it was resoundingly a 34-0 guilty verdict, and as you stand here today, we can talk about appeals. He is a convicted felon as we stand here today. And you've had people on both sides. It was interesting watching the lead up to this historic trial. You had people who were against him, people who were for him in the legal world, so to speak. And they, they were confounded with this whole case to start with. And they, they, they point to various grounds for appeals. But an appeals process doesn't happen overnight. No, and what I understand, his, his sentencing is going to be set for July 11th. Now, they may, they may move to delay that, but... Um, this was, this was the most, uh, according to the people, of the four uh, cases, the, the two federal cases, the one in Miami and the one in Washington, D.C., and the uh, case in Georgia, the state case, this was, they considered, the, the most difficult case for, for a prosecutor to prove. But they, they did it, and they did it resoundingly. Um, because of who he is, there were going to be people who were going to take sides and will take sides going forward. And every, I'll tell you this, as a guy who's done a lot of them, every trial can be picked apart piece by piece. But once again, I believe in the system. And the system here has spoken. Uh, many times you don't like it, but I've come to find out for cases that I've won and for cases that I've lost, as time will pass and you look back, it, it usually becomes more clear that juries are more wise than you give them credit for many times. And Joe, talking about the sentencing, obviously this is his first criminal conviction like this, and it's nonviolent. I know that you know you are here in Louisiana, but do you have some perspective of what he could be facing when it comes to the sentencing? Once again, not a New York lawyer. I believe his, his sentencing guide, uh, I'll use the term sentencing guidelines, a federal term, is uh, up to four years, which is the maximum. four years per count. Right, and I mean, you're not going to run them consecutively, obviously. Right. Uh, I, don't, I think that he is a first offender. In, in all, I don't want to say all jurisdictions, but, but a judge has a sentencing framework. And you look at things like, is he a first offender? They're called mitigating and aggravating. Uh, the mitigating charge, he's a first offender. It's a nonviolent crime, as you said. You know, aggravating, well... It, it, I'll tell you an aggravating thing that shouldn't, it's not gonna, gonna come into his sentence, but I, when I, as, a, as a trial lawyer who has been held in custody by a black robe judge for a lot less than some of the things I heard come out of his mouth, I'm really interested to see what happens with those 10 contempt charges against him. But that's separate and apart, and the judge would not be doing his duty if he sentenced him based upon contempt charges, those are separate. But as to this, I don't, I don't, if I had to bet, you're asking me, mm -hmm. I would bet that he is not put in jail, but it clearly is not beyond the realm of possibility because it's, he's exposed to up to four years. Yeah, and you also have to factor in, apparently, you know, the, the Secret Service accommodations for him because sure. presidents have that for life. Um, also, too, as a lawyer, I mean, you've probably heard of this. Um, recently, you heard Harvey Weinstein, one of his cases tossed at because certain information was brought into the case. You can know the legalese of this in the law world that should not be brought in because it prejudice against a defense in a case. Um, we've seen in this particular case, they've pointed to Stormy Daniels, they've pointed to some witnesses not being allowed 
in for the defense. I mean, when it comes to appeals and appealing the process, is it like the more examples you have? No, you don't uh, weigh, well, what there's a saying, I'm forgetting, you don't weigh by uh, number you weigh, uh, I, I messed that one up. Well, here's what I'm gonna say. In every case, if you sit down and read the briefs, the defense is gonna have a million issues that they're gonna have a problem with. The prosecution will then have their chance to rebut it. Um, I am sure there's gonna be some good appellate arguments as there always are. This was not the easiest case to bring. It was an interesting case uh, that it, it wasn't a, a, as, as straight, as linear as some other cases, but there are a lot of complex cases as you'll see in white collar crime. So uh, usually that gives you room to raise these types of issues that you, you bring and, I, and I'm sure that they're gonna be simplified to the general public when really they are probably more complex. So that's a, that's a long answer to a, to a tough question. Um, I'm certain they're gonna appeal. I'm certain they're gonna raise issues about uh, this is what should have gotten in that didn't, and this is what did get in that shouldn't have gotten in. That's, but that's what happens in just about every criminal case on appeal. And Joe, of course, Trump said that he maintains his innocence. Is that surprising? I mean, obviously all 34 counts, it wasn't just like it was like 18 counts he was guilty and then he was found not guilty on other counts. It's all 34. All 34. Uh, I know people as they're walking t to the, the, the electric chair, they're, they're proclaiming their innocence. So it's not, it's not a surprise that a defendant in a criminal case walks out of it and proclaims his innocence. Thank you so much, Joe Responti, giving us some it. perspective here on this uh, historic day. Let's return now to Fox News. Coverage of this verdict in New York City for former President Trump, Fox News in progress.